Hi everybody, Roddy here from Dash Digital Cash Brazil. We are at uh, LabBitConf 2017 in Bogota, Colombia. And today I have the pleasure to interview one of the biggest names today in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency on the world. Tracy Mayer, welcome to the program. Yeah, glad to be here. All right, so uh, is it your first time here in uh, Bogota, Colombia? No, no, I've been to Bogota before. Uh, I've actually been to all five of the Latin American Bitcoin conferences. Oh, good. good. So I've done extensive work even before the conferences down here in South America with Bitcoin and, uh, and just bringing the crypto space, like building it, helping them build it down here. Yeah, today, Latin America has been one of the biggest Dash users uh, because of the Dash uh, program that we had the Dash Caracas proposal approved by Dash, uh, the master nodes. Uh, my uh, uh, program with the Dash community for Brazil and also Dash Colombia with Dash Red. We have three very successful uh, proposals uh, that's been working extremely well and the amount of users are growing nonstop. So today with all the experience you have with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, what's your take on Dash Digital Cash? And I know you're a big fan. Yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm of course got into Bitcoin, uh, but I interviewed Evan for my, my podcast when Dash Which was, I'm a big fan of your podcast. Yeah, with Bitcoin <laughs> knowledge, uh, but it was $3 yeah. when I interviewed Evan for my podcast. And I what I saw with Dash and you know why I had him on the Bitcoin knowledge podcast, like why I have a Dash, right? But what I saw is that there's this fundamental innovation when it comes to <coughs> using the cash flow statement as applied to blockchain with the budget proposals. And so between the masternode network and these budget proposals, I think that's a big innovation. And I find that to be extremely interesting. It's democratic. Well... On the, on the voting system, at least. I suppose, well, it depends how many people own the masternodes who owns them, right? Like, Correct. But, but at the end of the day, it's a way that you can, you can use the blockchain and the block rewards, the Coinbase rewards, in a different way than just giving it all to miners. You can parse it out in different ways. So you change the economics, the incentives, and the game theory that is undergirding the blockchain. And so I found that to be extremely interesting with Dash, which is why I had Evan on my podcast, and why I've been following the Dash uh, project since then. Well, uh, Dash in the beginning of the year was around $9, and we actually went over the market cap, I think over $800 uh, I know. This, this past week. So it, it's a huge grow. Uh, a lot of investors are jumping in more and more on social media. We see the Dash exploding on counters. There's a program now on YouTube for Dash uh, in, in Arabic. East Europe is exploding as well. Yeah, I think I saw one of the budget proposals about uh, kind of similar to what you're doing with in Portuguese, but also I think in Eastern Europe, like targeting those languages. There's in Spanish, uh, Portuguese, uh, English, there's in Russian, in Arabic, now in Korean as well. So it's, 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 we're, we're taking over the planet basically, which is good, which well, is good. Well, it, it's, it's so fascinating because, I mean, I started publicly talking about Bitcoin at a quarter. I mean, I was the first blogger to talk about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency in general. And how much did the Bitcoin blockchain pay me to do that, right? Correct, yeah. Uh, when, you know, I, I helped with uh, Bitcoin.org and then I like helped on some of the translations. If and you I've own Bitcoin, projects. it's good for you. Yeah, yeah I mean, but, but, but then it, it enables everyone else who owns Bitcoin to free ride off of your efforts. Correct, correct. So you take, the, you take the costs, but then everybody else shares in the benefit. And so I find this just very interesting with Dash because it changes these game theory and, and just the economics and the incentives that go behind the blockchain. And so, you know, a lot of the Bitcoin, a lot of the, the staunch Bitcoiners, you know, I get a lot, of, a lot of, you know, they're always poking me about like talking about Dash. And I'm like, but like, look at the scoreboard. When I interviewed Evan, it was 0 .009 Bitcoin for a Dash and $3. Now it's like 0 0.077-ish, yeah. and it's $750. So the, in terms of the actual altcoins that have actually outperformed Bitcoin over a significant period of time of 18 months to two years, there's Dash, and I mean, I don't, I, I'm not aware of any others. I mean, maybe there's some others, but I am, I mean, you can't follow all the coins in this space. Dash has been losing, uh, Dash, sorry, uh, Bitcoin's been losing a lot of mark, marketing cap 
market cap lately to other Bitcoins. Ethereum at one point well, was mean, almost to 50% combining all the other coins yeah, together. But, but I don't think that's an accurate measure because you have to look at like the total liquidity and the volume that's available in these like, you know, in the ICO markets and all the altcoins. And Bitcoin, I mean, Bitcoin far and away is the deepest, the most liquid, the, the most secure blockchain, the most scalable in terms of like, I mean, it's doing 300,000 transactions a day. That's $20 billion of Bitcoin that gets melted down and recast into new coins. And there's the 200 day moving average is $800,000 a day for transaction fees. I mean, Bitcoin is a monster, you know, but Dash, Dash is at like 6 billion market cap. I mean, this thing is growing, like it's got legs fast. to it, it's fast. which it can do when it's at the lower market cap like that. I mean, when it gets, you know, when it's up to like 100, 100 billion market cap, it'll be a different coin. But when it's at 100 billion market cap, it's going to be doing what, $100 million a month of budget proposals? I mean, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be a monster too, we in had my a, opinion. We had a proposal approved just last month. Uh, about the Dash Air, uh, Air Force One or the Dash Force One, uh, uh, the squad, um, about the, the airplane right. uh, program that they had, it was I think over a thousand two hundred dashes right. that it's went over to this, a million dollars. which they're doing a fantastic job uh, of promoting Dash. Also, the Cuba uh, Cuba Cash project in Zimbabwe, they got a proposal approved for over five hundred dashes. I think if I'm not wrong, about four, like when Dash was four hundred dollars per coin. And today, I'm actually very proud to say, with a, with a bunch of friends here in Latin America, that we got paid by a blockchain. This is cool. Do what? We got paid by the blockchain. Oh, to come yeah, here and do this. Yeah, yeah, to do this. I mean, this this is cool. I oh. mean, how many people get to say that? Well, I mean, I look at. Okay, so I helped. I helped a little bit with the planning of the first Bitcoin conference. Yeah. Like in San Jose, I look back at how much I paid, you know, to do this, and then in Bitcoin. And I mean, how much would be worth and today? And how much it'd be worth today? Correct. And it's like, I mean, how can you turn? How can you turn the the economic incentives so that it's actually profitable to evangelize your coin, right? Because I mean, this is a this is a big problem. There are a lot of projects that I would like to to see happen with Bitcoin. I'm not going to pay yeah. for it. You know, Maybe you want to pay for it, but if we could, if we could pay for it through inflation via the block reward, uh, the way the Dash, you know, pays for these things, it's a huge innovation. It, I think it's a huge innovation when it comes to the how the cash flow statement is used with this blockchain technology, and I and for me that makes it an interesting project. Just last week, I was in the U.S. watching CNBC, and I, I hear talk about Bitcoin now on CNBC, Fox News, CNN, right. everywhere. Even the Big Bang, Big Bang Theory TV show yeah. mentioned Bitcoin. Which is like 15 million people watch that show. How, how important this, and what's the timeline that you can predict that, that Bitcoin will hit the mainstream? Oh, uh, well... Because it's growing fast. It, it's, it's, this, is, this is the third time that Bitcoin has had significant press coverage worldwide. So it's in the collective consciousness. Now whether people have honed in on Bitcoin's beacon and learned how to buy it, store it, secure it, all of this stuff, you know, that's still a very small percentage. But layer two solutions that will be built out like Lightning Network, this will enable it to be accepted by merchants and consumers. The CME futures options will allow the retailers like Amazon or Walmart to hedge that exchange rate risk. So these are network effects that Bitcoin has that Dash doesn't really have. Not right? yet. Not yet. Not I yet. Mean, but I mean, how long is it going to take before we see a Dash ETF or Dash futures being traded on Correct. CME? It could be a long time. You know, and it's only six billion. Well, it might not even cap. happen. Or it might not even happen. But you know, I, I I've talked with Max Kaiser a lot about Dash, and you'll notice Max is also yeah, he's, very. He's, he's fin I think he already finished his uh, pilgrimage uh, across U.S. Right with the, the with the his, documentary. Yeah, the docu Well, it's like a TV show with Stephen Baldwin. Correct. Right? Yeah. Anyway, like I've talked with Max Kaiser a lot about Dash, and you know he's actually very. Uh, he he thinks it's an interesting project too. So interesting backstory. They, they came to this, this TV show that Max is doing, he came to me and wanted, you know, wanted to see whether there was a Bitcoin angle that we could use to sponsor the, the, the van or the RV or whatever it is. You know, and so I went to a couple different Bitcoin companies uh, like Kraken, you know, I thought it'd yeah. be great brand exposure for them, all this stuff. 
we just couldn't make something work. And then it's like gets wins a budget proposal, and now Dash is prominently like displayed in this mainstream like Everywhere, TV yeah. show that that Max is going to do. So Dash was able to get their act together to get this thing funded, without whereas an ICO. Bitcoin was not without yeah. an ICO or any of this like garbage stuff that happens. Yeah. So you know, I look at all of that and how it's being applied, and now now it's six million dollars a month. It's, like that, 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 that buys a lot of human activity yeah, and, and action. And, and the master node, they've been very active on checking which proposal is being successful, who actually managed to get funds from proposal right. and not deliver. So there's been actually an investigation about a proposal. Say, listen, you asked for all this money, but you did not deliver this. So what's well, going on? Well, so the, we have a boss. Yeah, I mean, and, it sucks that I have to uh, 4,500 bosses and I have to reapply for my job every couple months. But that's that's how it, no, no, the future is being constructed like, as, now. A, as a hodler, I don't want to be inflated away in my value to yeah. like fund stuff that is not useful, right? So I mean that's great, but then the net, but I don't necessarily have time to review all these budget proposals. So then what happens? Well, somebody's like, well, I'll go and review all the proposals and come up with quick summaries. Yeah, you know. So I mean, it's really kind of it's really fascinating, like how this works, and. You know, I, I'm very excited to see where it goes because it, it, I think it's an innovation. Let's you know, look at innovation that is creating value. It is, it is. I'm amazed myself. I, I try to read as much as possible about other proposals, how they, they conduct the proposal, how actually uh, they deliver the report about the success and how they measure. It's, right. I mean, we're talking about different languages, different countries, different backgrounds. How are they, you know, so this is, it's, it's a lot for everybody to learn still. Yeah, so you got that, and then I don't know if you watched like the Q3 report, but now you've got this legal infrastructure that they're trying to build with a trust that would then own Dash Core Inc. Yeah. Right? And so, like, I mean, this is fascinating. Can a corporation be owned by a bunch of by computers? A, by, a, by a bunch of masternode yeah. owners that are voting through a blockchain around the planet that they don't like, even know each other? The, the, yeah. The, yeah. So you, you're getting a lot of this cooperate. You're getting a lot of coordination without well, a lot of cooperation without coordination with with. But then you're able to kind of coordinate like through the blockchain proposals and stuff. I mean, it's it's, it's fascinating. fascinating. It's cool. It's it, cool. It is a really fascinating yeah. thing that's that's taking place here. Uh, so I mean. Yes, yeah, so I find it just interesting, and I like I follow the project, which Good. That, that's part of the hard thing to do. You know, you got a thousand different currencies out there. Like, which it's ones, hard to keep track. Which today. one should yeah. people even keep track of? You know, and, and even like know what they're doing. Let's talk about Bitcoin a little bit. So, with the Bitcoin lately, we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold. I think there's Bitcoin Diamond. What's going on with this, and how much this can affect the credibility of Bitcoin? Because this might get people confused. Oh yeah, it's uh, well. I mean, this is what we've seen pretty much in every market, right? The Chinese come in and they make cheap Chinese knockoffs, and then they try to pass them off as the real thing. I mean, I remember reading a case in business school where they ripped off Tide's logo and put it on laundry detergent, and then the laundry detergent was like, you know burned people because it had too much acid in it and stuff but that's wow. what the Chinese do that you know they'll, they'll rip off stuff how do you know that you can trust it you can't trust it because they're cutting corners so but it creates all this intentionally confusing stuff that's going on but at the end of the day if you're running a full node a Bitcoin core full node you're not gonna get confused you've got real bitcoins right and so like just because they use the name Bitcoin Diamond or Bcash or Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin Gold, or just because they use the name doesn't doesn't mean they have anything to do with Bitcoin. Bitcoin yeah. In fact, even Bitcoin.com, Satoshi wrote on the forums that Bitcoin.com has nothing to do with the Bitcoin project. Yeah. So. But they bought the name and they bought the the, the, the name on the well, domain. Well, the domain was operational even before Bitcoin even existed. You know, yeah. someone was doing something else with it that wasn't even Bitcoin related. And so eventually they put everything up on Bitcoin.org, but at the end of the day, you're dealing with uh, with full nodes, and we've got what 120, 150 thousand full nodes that have connected to the Bitcoin network in the last 30 days. And if you're a large hodler, you don't even have to connect to the network. And it's this node infrastructure that's deployed that really can't be duplicated very easily. And and then we've got the seven network effects, and now we got the CME options and. I mean, Bitcoin is a 
it's a giant mutating, like, it Good. is a force to be reckoned with. Like, make no mistake about it. Bitcoin is unstoppable. Yeah, I would say we, we, so. We all know that. Yeah. Especially the more I read about it, the more I'm fascinated about how this, I would prefer to call an alien technology that was given to us by Satoshi, which by the way, we have the fake Satoshi Nakamoto walking around here. Yeah, I don't Dor know. Dorian. Yeah, Dorian. I, I, so I sat next to him. I took a picture with him. I thought it was great. I love yeah, it. I, I, love sat, it. I sat next to him at a coffee tasting like yeah. last night. So what, what, what's your take on how governments would actually manage to, once everybody's using cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Dash, Ether, whatever it is, that's unstoppable, untaxable, and unconfiscatable. How do you think governments will reorganize themselves on the taxation matter? Did you have an idea? Because you're a guy that you're, you're never a step ahead than everybody else because you've been dealing yeah. with this for a long time. Yeah, I would, I would say that they're probably going to have to stop trying to do personal income tax and move to some type of a consumption tax or a VAT because the merchants, the business owners are a whole lot easier to, to keep track them, yeah. of and tax than everybody else. And we're in a we're in a very flat world. You can fly all over the world very easily. You know, bring tourists in. If you're taxing the merchants, you know, you're able to tax the tourists easy also. So so I think they're gonna have to move towards taxing at the merchant level, you know, and then it's uh, instead of an income tax. And then it's also gonna be which which they also will want to do because a lot of these currencies are somewhat deflationary so their value goes up over time so you want to collect that tax at the time of purchase not a year later like when After you fill it up you know 10 I, pages report yeah. or whatever well I mean like I, I sold I sold a significant amount of some cryptocurrency I'm gonna be paying a lot of taxes but it's gonna I'm gonna pay those taxes in like six or eight months and so I'm gonna sell some cryptocurrency in six to eight months when I actually need to pay the taxes, right? <laughs> to get the dollars. And in the meantime, like average sale price was something like $4,500 for Bitcoin. And now it's at 11,000. Well, if I had gotten the tax liability 11, dollars. 11,000, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's just going up so fast. But but because I've held on to the, to the Bitcoin instead of getting into dollars to pay the taxes, like now I have to sell less Bitcoin. Yeah. So the governments, I think they're gonna need to tax the businesses. They'll, they'll need to tax at the time of purchase, you know, to get the cash sooner. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and it'll be way more efficient than trying to do a, an income tax. tax per, I mean, it's just, person, income yeah. tax is good for a, a fairly inflationary system like the Federal Reserve, yeah. but it's just not feasible with Bitcoin, wow. in my opinion, and well, the other cryptocurrencies. And, and like you said, Bitcoin, it's the icebreaker. It's cutting through the ice. It's taken a lot of damage, you know, doing that, but it's got so much mass and it's growing so fast it can do that. But Dash doesn't have to do that, right? It can just draft in behind Bitcoin and cover a lot more territory with a lot less effort because the path has already been blazed. So, I mean, it's, and, and, and Bitcoin's blazing the path for, for cryptocurrency as a whole. And I think there are going to be a lot of cryptocurrencies that, that become very successful and will follow up this and, trap, this path. Yeah, and they're gonna, and we're gonna get specialization of specialization of labor for different use cases for the different for the different cryptocurrencies. So it's yeah. like, you know, I don't really see the cryptocurrencies necessarily being in competition with each other. You know, find a little niche that Bitcoin doesn't serve very well, and and go after that. In Dash's case, they're going after payments. They've got maybe 12 to 18 months before that window closes, and layer two solutions like Lightning Network and stuff are out, and then Bitcoin's able to like move into that network effect, right? But in the meantime, like Dash can go after that and try to take territory in that area. In a way, in a fast way. Which they're doing in a, yeah, fast, in a way. fast way. And consequently, we see a six billion dollar market cap. Tracy May, I want to thank you for everything yeah, you've done for Bitcoin. So I don't know if anybody and asked. Dash. Yeah, anybody <laughs> told you that before? I really appreciate. I'm, I'm a big fan of your podcast. I always get news from you, so you've uh -huh. been a, a huge inspiration, not to me, but to a lot of people, because you know we, we need guys like you who's been, you know, since the beginning and, and giving us proper information, especially when the whole fork, the beep, when one four nine, one five one. I, I understood what was happening because of you, so thank you very much. I appreciate you having the time to stop by at Dash Digital Cash Brazil. Until we meet again. Thanks so much. Dash. Dinheiro Digital.